My name is Phyllis Morgan. I'm the program director of Forbes Trial Faith in Action. The vision of the organization is very, very simple, and that's to help those seniors who are in need. And we consider a senior to be someone who is 60 years of age and older. So if there's help that they need with transportation, with yard work, with light handyman services. We're not putting on a roof, we're not going to replace windows, but I really don't want to see an 80 or a 90 year old stepping on a ladder in order to change a light bulb. Our volunteers are going to be there for them. We also help with correspondence. In this day and age, people are besieged, especially from the medical companies, uh, with a lot of bills. And they really don't know, should I pay this one, shouldn't I pay that one? Has it already been paid? So we have volunteers that, believe me, like to do that kind of stuff. So they're the investigators. They will go through everything and make sure that the bill is uh, paid correctly. And many times we are often asked to intercede for them whenever there is a problem with the bill. In addition to that, we also like to be able to go out with our uh, care recipients and be able to visit them. But one of the most important things that we're starting to find out nowadays is caregiver relief. And what I mean by that is there are individuals out there who are caring for a loved one 24 seven. And many times they have a need to get out and either go grocery shopping or maybe even go and do something personal for themselves. But they want their loved one to remain safe at home. So by calling Faith in Action, we can get a trained volunteer to go out there. We don't do anything medical, but we can certainly spend that time, a couple hours with them, and their caregiver will know that they are in safe hands. So those are just some of the things that we're doing for them. My name is Ruth Fowler, and I'm a volunteer. A couple of years ago, I had surgery on my shoulder. So I was in a position where my arm was in a cast, I was really told not to move my arm at all. So I was eating with my left hand and it was very difficult. Well, I had to go to um, physical therapy three times a week. Well, how am I gonna do this? You know, I, I have lots of friends. I have good neighbors, but you can't, you know, impose on your neighbors in a way. You can't keep saying to people, would you mind taking me today? So I heard about Faith in Action and I got in touch with Phyllis and she came out and interviewed me and set it all up and then I was going to be taken care of. As it turned out, I um, got in touch with my automobile insurance company and they said I could drive with my left arm. So it turned out no one ever needed to help me. But I had experienced that sort of panicky feeling like what do you do when you can't do for yourself? And it, it, I guess maybe that's a good advantage of bad things that happen is you feel really compassionate for other people in that situation. So I volunteered. I said, well, I would take people. And as it turns out, I really enjoy this. These people are interesting and, you know, I, I don't so much view them as just people who have troubles. They're interesting, wonderful people. And I like to read and I like to knit, so while they're, you know, talking to the doctor, whatever, I'm having a good time and I'm meeting other people. And another part of it is, for people who can't drive, I always say on the way home, would you like to stop at Giant Eagle? And every time, yes, because they can't, I mean, one woman I took her, we bought stamps, she had to get money from the bank, and she had to go to the Giant Eagle. And, you know, when you think, if you can't do that, how constricted your life is. It's just, it really is a pleasure. It makes me feel really good, not only to help those people, but to know those people. They're wonderful people. My name is Michelle Clark, and I'm currently the chair of the steering committee, which assists the program director in trying to provide services within the communities that we serve. To sum it up very easily is we serve as the family, not every day, not providing meals, not providing those kinds of things. But what we do do is if somebody doesn't have a family member around or doesn't have a very functional family member around, which many people in the area don't have, um, they can call us and we provide services to provide transportation to a variety of things. Our biggest transportation is to doctor's appointments. We even have the mayor of Murraysville taking people for cataract surgery in um, Pittsburgh. So we have a lot of volunteers who do that. So we do help that. We also provide transportation for shopping. 
we provide transportation for say somebody has a spouse or somebody in a nursing home if they request we might take them to visit that member we also provide um, telephone assistance uh, say somebody's had surgery and they just want us to check on them. We don't provide any medical services, but we want to make sure, especially in the light of today's medical kind of things, sometimes people are discharged and don't feel real secure about being at home. So we do provide that kind of phone call. We also provide phone calls, with, for example, one woman uh, we had, she wanted a call every day of the year. We put a team of three people together to call her every day of the year, including Christmas. She did not want to be found dead three days later in her home. On the other hand, we had a 90-something year old who made these kinds of calls. And after a while, these people make these kinds of links and provide services. So I feel not only do we provide services to our recipients, but also the goodness of community is shared with the people who are our volunteer. We do safety checks where we go into the home, and I think it's a four-page kind of thing. It's very private. It doesn't go to Office of Aging or insurance companies or anybody else to tell people what in their home might cause a fall or other kinds of safety issues. If we get into these homes and we find they don't have grab bars, they don't have smoke detectors, we can provide this through a grant for free. So we provide a lot of services like that. I think our office staff also spends a lot of time just talking to people, helping them feel that they have a connection to their community. But we also need individuals who are willing to donate at least a few hours, a week, a month, uh, to be able to help a senior remain independent in, in their home. And another thing that we do need is the funding in order to be able to carry on this project. Michelle had alluded to the home safety program that we do. It's a 91 point checklist that we do. And if the individual owns their home and we see, and the volu trained volunteer sees that they need a grab bar or an inside banister, we have a licensed contractor that will go ahead and do that. But once again, we need to pay for those materials. Another thing on the home safety check that we would like to do is start to put in the carbon monoxide detectors. That takes money. So um, those are things that the fundraising, we do the background checks. I think it's also important for people to know that the volunteer that is going into the home of the senior has gone through training, has gone through a background check. So you're just not, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your grandmother is just not opening up their door to anyone. It's someone that has actually gone through uh, a background check and we feel very comfortable with them entering that home and we want the senior to be comfortable with them also. The services are 60 and above and uh, there is no other qualifications. You don't, we don't do a background check, we don't do a financial check, we just say you have a need. You can volunteer as often and for whom you want to volunteer for. You get all the emails about people who need help. So you can totally fit it around your schedule. If you have a busy week, don't volunteer that week. It really is nice. It's a great volunteer opportunity. I've lived in Murraysville for over 40 years. I've volunteered in Murraysville for over 40 years. I worked in Murraysville for 13 years for the municipality and indeed in other kinds of places. I had no idea that there were so many people without support from families, from church, or from neighbors out there. I had no idea. It was rather shocking to me. Uh, a friend of mine, Ruth Ann Valentine, talked me into this, Dr. Valentine, and when she talked me into this, she said they need help fundraising, which I'm fairly good at, and I found at that point the great need that there was. And it's very satisfying to be able to serve a portion of a community that simply wasn't served before and would not be served without us.